on page 23 of your um, notebooks, we're going to be taking notes today on an introduction to factoring. You may have heard part of that term before. I'm sure you did when you were first learning multiplication as a vocabulary term. A factor, if you'll remember, is a number that gets multiplied to make a new number. So both 3 and 4 here are factors. And that's still true when we're multiplying numbers with variables. So this coefficient 3 with the x, if I multiply that by 2, both of these are factors. And that equals 6x. We multiply the 3 times the 2, and the 2 becomes part of this as 3 times 2 becomes 6, and the x stays with it. So if I ask you to factor something, it has another meaning. Sometimes we say factor or factoring, because the factoring is the action part of it, as you guys know with that ing at the end. So factoring or fact means to just undistribute. That means that we're splitting it apart. or we divide out what's in common. So let's make a quick table here. We're going to have the distributed version. The split apart part. Put a line there so I separate my table from my other writing. And then over here, this is the factor version. Notice I've got the ED on both because when they're there, it will already have happened. The split apart is where we're going to show the action of factoring. So let's say I have the expression 3x plus 6. I'm going to take those two pieces and I'm going to split them apart. And because both of them are positive, I can just write them as 3x and 6. And when I, I want to see what those two are equal to. Well, what does that mean? It means I've got this as a 1 times a 3 times an x. And the 6 would be 1 times 2 times 3. And what we're looking for is what they have in common. What they have in common is the 3. So in the factored version, we're going to put the 3 here. Whatever they have in common goes first. And then we're going to take parentheses, and we're going to take what's left of the term. So we have here 1 times x. We would leave the 1 invisible and just write x. And because both of these are positive, we go back to this here and make sure we put a plus in the middle, as the beginning was, because that's an and sign. We're saying 1 times x and 1 times 2, which would be x plus 2. And if you think in your head about the claw, 3 times x would be 3x. 3 times 2 would be 6. This is the distributed version and the factored version. Let's try a couple of other examples here. What if I have negative 12x minus 3? Well, this time we've got negatives. Negative 12x, negative 3. What are those equal to when I break them into their parts? Well, negative 1 times 3 times 4, or I'm going to put it as its prime factors, times 2 times 2, oops, times x, got to squeeze that x in there. Negative 3 is just negative 3, or negative 1 times 3. This really has both of these in common. So negative 1 times 3, negative 1 times 3, those two together are going to come over here and become negative 3 outside the parentheses. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to put what's left here. This is kind of a tricky one because there's nothing left down here, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But we have 2 times 2 times x. 2 times 2 is 4, and it keeps the x. Notice there's no plus sign here, but we took care of the negative over here because there's the negative. They're both being used. All that's left here really is an invisible one, and it's a positive. 
I know that seems kind of strange, but you can't just leave this blank here because we wouldn't get the second term. And as we check this, think about the claw. Negative 3 times 4x would be negative 12x. Negative 3 times 1 would be negative 3. This one could have also been written as negative 12x plus a negative 3. Remember, we like our invisibles in math, so originally it was written with an invisible. But there is a plus there because plus means and, and there's a second term here, and the second term has to be 1. How about this one? 20y minus 16. Well, we're going to break 20y and negative 16 into its parts. We have to think about all the prime numbers that can multiply to get 20. Well, we have 1 times 2. That leaves 10, because 2 times 10 gets this, but 10 is not prime. So I want to break that down to be 2 times 2 times 5. This is 4. This is 5. 5 times 4 would be... Oops, I added an extra one. There we go. I was thinking time, 4 times 5. So 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20. And it's positive, so those are all positive. We have negative 16 here, so we have to have a negative 1 times, I'm thinking in my head that's 4 times 4, and 4 and 4 are not prime. Each one of those gets a 2. Double check myself, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16, times negative 1 gives me negative 16. What does this have in common? I have two twos for both of those. What's 2 times 2? 4. 1 times 5 gives me, oops, I forgot the y up here. 1 times 5 times y gives me 5. Why? I've got a negative 1 times 2 times 2. So that's going to be 4 over here times negative 1. I could either write this as just negative 4 <coughs> or if we did that though we'd be a little bit fancier with our parentheses and make them brackets so we could have this parenthesis inside. That's why this is the simplified version. Just putting a negative inside when we end up with a negative for our second term. Okay, let's do one more, maybe two more, we'll see if we have time. 5x minus 25x. Okay, well we could combine those as like terms because 5x minus 25x, but what we're being asked to do is factor them. So let's first factor. And we have 5x minus 25x. This equals 1 times 5 times x. And this equals negative 1 times 5 times 5 times x. Has in common a couple of things. A 5 and an x for both. The first term is going to get just a 1. That's all that's left is that positive 1. That's why it's so important, just like this one up here. When we're doing these, even though we have a negative 1 here, putting the positive one and making the positive one visible here because they could become part of your answer. That invisible might become visible. And then we have negative one times five. And I'm just gonna keep the simplified version versus doing what we did up here and think in your head, does five x times one equal five x? Yes, and does neg positive five x times negative five equal negative 25 x? And it does. Last one, negative 9 plus 6m. I don't usually use something other than x or y, but you might see an m or a z. There's all sorts of other variables that could be out there. Still, we just break this up into its two terms. We break those terms into their parts. I put the plus 6m down here just to show it is positive. If we, if we have a positive in the middle, we can keep it here or not. 
1 times 2 times 3 times m. All these have in common is the 3. So the 3 is going to go in front. What's left for this first term? Negative 1 times 3. 1 times 2 times m. So 2 times m is 2m. And we get a plus sign there.